Hey, what's up, metalheads? It's time to talk about Savage Avengers number one, the most metal Marvel comic on the market. I mean, when you got uh, Wolverine fighting Conan and you throw Venom in the mix, this is like every metalhead's fantasy. It's like a conversation I had in gym class with a dude with a, a, a jean jacket with a furry collar. And, uh, you know, he used to draw the Metallica logo over and over and over again uh, on his uh, binder. So this is really a book for that guy, right? Savage Avengers. Oh, did I mention the Punisher's in it as well? Right? So uh, it's got all the classic uh, metal Hesher characters. Um, but if you don't believe me, let's check out the tr official comic trailer from Marvel Comics. So metal. I'm very happy to tell you I'm collaborating with uh, Mike Diodato and Frank Martin Jr. on the Savage Avengers. We will be bringing in some of the biggest, baddest heroes and villains in the Marvel Universe to go rumbling through this book. The team is not so much a team as it is sort of an aggregate group that comes together. There's uh, a threat in the Savage Land. we discovered that there's this new place we've never seen before, the City of Sickles. Issue one has my favorite fight scene. Uh, Mike Diodato uh, is perhaps the best artist for this series. He's very adept at drawing people beating the living hell out of one another, which happens an awful lot in our series. Other characters that, that come into play in the course of the adventure include the Punisher, Elektra, uh, Venom, uh, uh, Dr. Voodoo. This, the aggressor, uh, sets the tone, and it really is the hand that is driving the creation of the Savage Avengers. Uh, the spell, overall spell requirement is the blood of, of warriors that have shed blood. So they're after the most dangerous people. So it's high stakes, high reward for the hand. And they're gonna win some, uh, but if the Savage Avengers can set aside their many differences, um, you know, who knows might show up. These are all characters that don't bother with a lot of, of talking or a lot of discussion. It's all slashing and hacking and stabbing and shooting and pummeling and destroying. Um, it's, it's a very visceral uh, comic. Right, so Savage Avengers. Uh, let's talk about the team for a second. We'll talk about the book. Uh, we're going to take a look at some interior pages too. So this is a book that I kind of like wanted to hate. I thought I would hate it. Um, I don't like these kind of characters necessarily. Like I like Wolverine. I like the Punisher. Uh, not a huge Venom fan, but whatever. When you put them all together, sometimes these things add up to just be a little too dark and crazy. I don't know. Um, not usually my cup of tea, but um, I really, really uh, like Mike Diodato. I think he's a great artist, and uh, I think that uh, his work alone kind of elevates this book, right? Um, uh, of course, besides uh, the characters we know, the, the, the main characters, we've also got uh, Dr. Voodoo, classic Marvel character from the 70s. Really not sure... Uh, why anybody cares about him, but clearly it's going to be, if it's tied in with a hand, there's undead and zombies involved and stuff. Um, he's in this book for like, this first issue for like a second and really does almost nothing and what does he does do is kind of off camera, so whatever. And then, you know, it seems a little uh, testosterone heavy. We need a little, uh, a little feminine energy here. So, ooh, let's bring in Electra, right? Because... Of all the female assassin type characters, like it, dudes that like Venom and and Punisher and stuff, for whatever reason, also like Elektra. And hey, that's okay. Who am I to judge? So uh, let's take a look at some some of the interior pages uh, of the comic. So um, Mike Diodato is really good. Um, he's been working for a long time, and I see that. Uh, his style has 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 changed. His inks are a little looser than they used to be. It used to be really about like sort of uh, a lot of like inked in shadows. Uh, while his work is still dark and kind of shadowy, his 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 loose has his work has a kind of a looser look than it used to, and I think that's good. 
Um, I think overall he really nails like uh, uh, these kind of atmospheric shots. The Savage Land um, looks cool. The the sort of uh, death cult that is basically like kidnapping all kinds of talented people, but especially warriors, and uh, filling up this big pit full of blood uh, in order to resurrect, uh, you know, some giant monster from the past. So, um, I think that, uh, team wise, Jerry Duggan, I'm not really familiar with his writing. I, I'm not sure what I've read of his before. Diodato, his work goes way, way back. I remember it from the, his work in the Hulk like 10 years ago, but he's been around a lot longer than that. Um, as you can see, you know, he's, he's highly skilled. This is really nice work. Um, not just rendering, like the pictures are pretty, but the, the storytelling, the action from panel to panel, um, is really great. Uh, there's cool, good motion and uh, lots of cool stuff, uh, lots of cool headbutts and and whatnot, and and it, and it reads very well like a fight scene. It's not like don't you hate when you see a movie and there's a fight scene and you can't tell what's going on because it's all quick cuts and and you don't really get to see like the action. I like martial arts and action movies where there's fighting work. You kind of like get a real intimate view of all all the moves and this one's really great. It gets, you know, up close. Conan's grabbing other guys' swords and stabbing them with it. Um, pretty cool stuff. Uh, so Diodato's great. Great with action. And then of course we get fan service. This is what we're looking for. We get a nice Conan versus Wolverine battle, right? And I say nice, but it's almost like goofy, slapstick goofy, uh, because of you know with Wolverine's healing power, powers like what can Conan do? Could probably figure out something, but in this fight, it's sort of like stab me all you want, dude. Uh, but there's fun to be had along the way, right? And the action is good, the art is good. Conan is an awesome character. He's written pretty well, pretty interestingly in, in this, like. Conan from the movies, sort of Arnold Schwarzenegger, was kind of like, kind of big and dumb and, and, and not very articulate, whereas the Conan from like the novels, from Robert Howard's novels and from the comics is definitely, you know, while he's a super big tough guy, barbarian, he's also super crafty, and it's really his mind more than anything that makes him so formidable, right? We don't get to see a lot of that uh, in, the, in this comic, but... This, I haven't read much of Marvel's um, new Conan stuff since they got the license from Dark Horse. Now they're allowed to do uh, Conan comics. And the first thing they did was an Avengers Conan crossover. And I guess this comic springs in, springs out of that. So at the end of that uh, series, which I did not read, uh, the uh, Avengers uh, end up in the Savage Land and Conan ends up st stuck in the Savage Land in the Marvel 616 universe, whatever you want to call it, the main Marvel universe. Um, so in this one, he uh, sort of has to deal with that and, and, and meets up with Wolverine, and that's about all that happens. They fight. They drink. And we get set up sort of for the next issue when we realize, um, you know, that uh, Brother Voodoo gets involved for a second, and then... That's about it. That's all we see. Conan is uh, really into, like, he's found a tower with a magic jewel in it. And that's like, that's like, you know, Conan's thing. You got a tower? You got a jewel in it? You got a magic jewel? I I'm all over it, right? That's like classic Conan stuff. Um, maybe almost like too cliche of a Conan story, but eh, whatever. Um, so I'm not going to give away the whole story because there's not much story actually to give away, right? Conan will refight. They sort of move on. We sort of get set up for the next stage in which the death cult is going to uh, go after someone in the Marvel Universe who has supposedly killed more than almost anyone else. And that person, of course, is Frank Castle, the Punisher. And, uh, you know, he's obviously he's on the cover, but we sure as heck don't see him in this comic much until close to the very end. Um, I will say, if you like bloody martial arts action sword fights and wolverine and uh and if you like metallica you will probably enjoy savage avengers i know just the kind of person this is for uh, the kind of person who used to shop at my store and, and the kind of books they would buy and this is just mm, mm, they would just eat this up so um if you're that kind of person 
why not go check it out? And uh, speaking of which, and checking things out, if you like this video, why don't you check out some of my other videos? We've got stuff about comic books and computers and I don't know, I'm thinking about branching out into all kinds of goofy stuff and, and, and whatever I'm interested in talking about. But of course, I'll always be interested in comics. So don't forget to uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you think uh, this comic's going to be like or if these are your favorite characters. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe and ring that bell if you're interested in getting notifications of future videos. Thanks for watching.